This time on episode 275 of Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D., we talk Runaways Season 1, Episode 5, Kingdom. We talk weekly Marvel news, and we talk your feedback. I'm Willie D. Nelson from All Things Good and Nerdy, a pop culture podcast, part of the Gunna Geek Network. Just like the show you're checking out now. Shows on the network are individually owned, and opinions expressed may not reflect others. Find other tantalizingly geeky shows at GunnaGeekNetwork.com. You have been granted clearance by director Alfonso Mac McKenzie. Stand by for a shield debriefing. All information to be discussed here is classified and may only be discussed among agents granted clearance by the S.H.I.E.L.D. director. Now it's time for your Schedule D briefing. I'm Director SP. I'm Agent Haley. I'm Agent Lauren. Welcome to Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D., a Marvel Comic Universe fan show. The show is recorded on Sunday, March 24th, 2019, live from the Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D. studios and broadcast LA-wide via www.geeks.live. Come join our chat as we record. Happy National Puppy Day, ladies. This is truly a blessed holiday. I celebrated by cuddling with a puppy right before the podcast. I saw a puppy. Actually, it was not today. It was last night. It's been a very sleep-deprived but happy weekend for me. I was told yesterday that... um, Somebody in the family wanted to volunteer at a shelter to get their dog fix in. Did they come home with the dog? No, there was no volunteering this weekend, but I okay. do anticipate that occurring sometime soon. Because that's what happened to everybody I know that was like, I'm going to work at a shelter so I won't get a puppy. They come home with the dog. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The, I, I, wasn't, when I, I used to volunteer at a shelter when I was like in high school and college. And in high school, I couldn't do that because, you know, my parents, I did, I was so tempted to smuggle home, like, smaller puppies and kittens in my clothes, <laughs> but I couldn't. And in college, I could not afford pet rent, so that kind of put a damper on it. Yeah. Pet, pet rent is some BS, if you ask me. Agreed. It, do you have to pay rent on kids? No. Sometimes. That seems like it would be illegal. It's an occupant thing. It's not a kid's thing. Okay. All right. Well, I'll let everybody know how this all goes because I'm pretty sure I know which way it's going. Puppies are pure and wonderful and too good for this world and we don't deserve them. We don't them. deserve them. And they're so good. And actually, my friend just sent me a picture of her dog and her dog is my friend and I get to see her next month. So that's, I can't wait to see my friend's dog and my friend. So oh, good. I'm glad you put that one in there because I was just about well, to say. Well, I just saw my friend. I haven't seen my friend's dog since January. The friend's definitely secondary to the dog. I understand. All right. It looks like we have consensus here. And with that, we can move on. Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D. is a fan based podcast, predominantly on the ABC show Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., which is currently in the 40 fifth hiatus week following the season five finale we've done way more episodes about not agents of shield than about agents of shield just I'm saying pretty sure that's true if you look at our back catalog the multiple marvel television series on the small screen and the marvel cinematic and comic book universes in general because of really bad high school reunions if you'd like to talk to us about your terrible high school reunion reunion i can word good you can contact us at our website, legendsofshield.com. You can leave us a voicemail from your really bad reunion at 844-THE-BUS-1. That's 844-843-2871. You can share your stories or pictures of your terrible high school reunion on our Facebook at Legends of Shield Podcast. You can tweet us about your bad high school reunion. We are at Legends of Shield. You can see our faces of dismay thinking about how increasingly far we are from our high school reunions. Well, or like how how much bigger the numbers are getting, really. Like, 
10, 15, 20, 25, etc. Our, our dismayed faces on YouTube at youtube.com slash gonna geek. You can ask Alexa about her high school reunion and tell your Amazon device to enable Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D. skill. You can join our Discord server chat at gunnageek.com slash discord. And remember, Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D. is a proud member of the gunnageek.com network. Ladies, we have been without Michelle for a couple of episodes now, and we hope to have her back next time. But we just want to say that we miss her and that we do hope to have her back. And feel free to go ahead and reach out to her on Twitter. Her Twitter handle is at Michelle Ely, M-I-C-H. E L L E E A L E Y. So go ahead and do that. Tell her hi and that you miss her and that you wish she would come back on Legends of Shield because there has to be more outweighing SP on this podcast. <laughs> In the meantime, we're going to get on with the runaways. We're going to talk Runaway Season 1, Episode 5 this week. The episode is titled Kingdom. It aired on Hulu on December 5th, 2017. So we're still within that two-year window, so we feel like it's a new episode. Haley, who directed this episode? This episode was directed by Jeffrey W. Bird. He has 24 directing credits starting in 1997. Those credits include five episodes of Soul Food, two of Single Ladies, two of Rebel, one of the originals, one of Charmed, the new version, two of Runaways, one of Black Lightning, and three episodes of The New Dynasty. Am I the only one that has still checked out Charmed on this show? I think so. Yeah. Okay. Nothing against it. I just, what is time? Oh, yeah. I know. I, I have like eight seasons of Marvel shows to catch up on. I'm probably more than that, but I don't know. You probably have me on the Netflix side. Anyway, Lauren, who wrote this episode of Kingdom? This episode was written by a team, a, uh, a duo of writers, if you will. First off, we have Rodney Barnes, who has 15 writing credits starting in 1998 with um, My Wife and Kids, nine episodes of that, four episodes of Everybody. Actually, I'm showing here 11 episodes of Everybody Hates Chris. Um. Ooh, nine episodes, actually written by 11 episodes, but writer for nine episodes of The Boondocks, which was a fantastic cartoon. Six Guys, One Car, writers for, writer for six episodes. Writer for the BET Awards in 2017. Two episodes of Runaways, this episode and the upcoming Tsunami. One episode of American Gods. And just fun fact... This is not his first encounter with Marvel. He is also listed on IMDb as miscellaneous crew for Blade in 1998. <laughs> nice. Which, guys, when are we going to watch Blade? I know. I love that movie. The other writer is Mike Vukadinovich, who has four writing credits starting in 2017 with Rememory, which I've never seen. I'm very sorry. But story editor for nine episodes of Runaways and written by for two episodes of Runaways, one episode of Kidding, and very interestingly, screenplay for Beetlejuice 2. Ooh. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. All right. And as Michelle likes to point out every week, The Runaways is based on the Marvel comics by Brian K. Vaughn and Adrian Alfano. Alfona. Alfono. And that's why I never say it. Kingdom is the title of the episode. We often link the title of the episode to the overall theme of the episode. And I think there's multiple different layers to that because you definitely have the kidnapping of Alex Wilder going on. So there's the whole kingdom that Jeffrey is had at one point in time and that has transferred over to his, I don't I don't, what do you want to call he, At one point in time, he's like his lieutenant, his N number one gangster sort of he was basically a brother really yeah. yeah so yeah there was the kingdom transfer between the two there is the dinosaur kingdom going on i mean there's a whole bunch of kingdoms in this so Haley, what's your biggest kingdom that comes to mind when you're talking about this episode i mean there's also kind of the kingdom of like who's in charge of pride 
that seems to kind of come up every time they're getting together. I would agree with that. That's a good one, especially since at the end of this episode, you do have the resurrection of what we know by credits to be Jonah. So there's mm -hmm. that. Yeah, and really just kind of on a meta thing, pride, when I hear pride, the two things I think about, one, gay pride, and the other one is a pride of lions. And lions are always called, you know, oh, king of the jungle and kingdom, you know, their whole little thing. They're, they've set up a little area in L.A. to rule over, essentially. Yeah, and perhaps destroy eventually. We'll get to that in a second. <laughs> it does start, the episode starts out with the whole... Alex being kidnapped because that happened last episode. So everybody's dealing with that and trying to save him. We get a phenomenal team fight. It's the first team fight of the series because everybody's figuring out everybody other's powers and they're using them and they were pretty effective. I mean, not so effective in tipping their hand, the fact that they do have powers, but they get to use them. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's just this this episode is where them as not just okay, a bunch of teenagers who sometimes hang out, but them as kind of a burgeoning superhero team really starts to come together. Also, this is kind of the point in the season where it picks up a little bit. Um I was explaining to my girlfriend like she was like, "Well, what is this show about?" And I was able to summarize the first four episodes in about Two minutes. Pretty much. It's been a fun watch, though. The, the right. first four episodes. But if you've missed these episodes, like you can catch up and know what's going on. Especially since the first two episodes were covering the same time period. Yeah. Yeah, so we see, finally, we've been talking, I think we talked the last episode about how every time Molly is like, you guys are really strong. Everyone's <laughs> just like, yeah, yeah, pat on the head. And here she finally gets to show it. And we have her, you know, kind of spill in the tea about, oh, yeah, Gert has a dinosaur. And we have Chase showing up with the Fistagons. And we have Nico with the Staff of One, which I guess we don't know that's what it's called yet, but Magic Staff. <laughs> oh, thanks. I was wondering if it had a name. Yeah, it, it doesn't get that in the first season, I don't think. Because ah. I don't remember that. We have Carolina taking off her bracelet in front of more than just Chase. And using, using the power projecting, not just like pretty lights. Yeah, not just we, I glow, but using it, using it. <laughs> I liked Gert's response to that, by the way. Oh, great. <laughs> not only is she pretty, but she glows too. Yeah, if you've, again, it's the very much that teenage girl experience. We're, I don't know, again, I, I have never been a teenage boy. I don't know how it is for teenage boys. Teenage girls are pitted against each other. And there's, there's nothing kind of more humiliating than being upstaged and outshone by someone like that just kind of so effortlessly sometimes. It, I mean, again, I also don't have the experience of being a teenage boy, but it seems like they are given outlets for rivalries that come between them. They are pitted against each other in structured competition most of the time, whereas girls are kind of pitted against each other in more of a social arena. Yeah. Yeah, girls, it's like, oh, God, I just sudden flashbacks to middle school and high school. It, yeah, I just lived through a, a whole lifetime of bring it on, basically. So I'm kind of aware <laughs> I didn't have to go through it personally, but I'm kind of aware of what happens and all the drama and stuff like that. For teenage boys, it's mostly trying not to get your butt kicked for four years or so. That's pretty much what high school is all about. Yeah, I, I went to a high school where you had a little bit of that element with the, you know, the, the gangs and stuff with girl gangs. Oh, my God, girl gangs are vicious. 
you have not lived terror until you have seen uh, two cholas jump across the table and try to rip each other's earrings out of their ears and Eek. each other's hair out. It's, it's vicious. It's terrifying. But there's also that incredibly horrifying, just passive-aggressive, you know, I'm taller than you. I have bigger boobs than you. I'm richer than you. I'm, I have more power than you. I have more social cachet than you. Oh, I'm sorry. Were you, it, it's that, that when you hear people do that impression of some, that like the, the, the sorority girl, quote unquote, I'm sorry. There's, there's a reason it always starts with that because it's, we're, we're socialized to be that passive aggressive. So again, much as I'm like, oh, come on, it's, it's BS that we're pitted against each other that way. At the same time, we are pitted against each other that way. And it, seeing that and hearing that it just brought me back to feeling about two inches tall. I was a little bit surprised at Carolina being able to drive like a maniac and then not get caught by any cops as well. I thought that was a little far-fetched in a well-patrolled neighborhood. First off, Waze has a little... Uh, again, I am not condoning anything illegal, but I am saying Waze has little, like, you can report if you see cops on the road, so you know to slow down. And the other thing is, she's a pretty white girl. Yeah, so it doesn't matter if she gets caught. All right, well, I don't think if you're in the middle of a car chase that you're going to use ways, but maybe. Totally should. Next time you're in a car chase, everybody. <laughs> With a staff. <laughs> Magic staff on board, yep. All right, Alex, for his part, he's been kidnapped by Darius, the brother of Jeffrey, so to speak, that we were talking about before. And then they get in a little confrontation eventually because Darius wants a million dollars. I think he wants more than a million dollars, but he's going to start the shakedown at this point with a million dollars for Alex. Wants a million dollars, takes it to, takes him to Nana B's house. And they're waiting for Jeffrey to show up with the $1 million. And that's when everything goes down because Jeffrey brings his guys with guns and there's a big gunfight. And ultimately... What happens here is Alex shoots Andre, which totally surprised me. I did not think Alex was going to go there. Yeah, Andre, by the way, is just this kid on Darius's team. He's, he's a hacker. He's smart. He and Alex have a little discussion about, oh, you think that it's only smart, rich kids who can learn to code? Like He's the one who cloned the phone in, what was it, the yeah. first episode, second episode? He's also like who Alex might have become if his father hadn't taken the path he did. Exactly. And I think Alex sees that because, again, Alex not a dumb kid. And he's starting to have his eyes open to exactly what kind of person his dad is. It's not just, oh, my dad might have participated in a human sacrifice. It's, oh, my dad screwed over one of his closest friends to the point where he's willing to use me as leverage to try to make things even. And not even to make things even, to try to begin to make things even. And it's, again, there comes a point in your life when the illusions about things that you thought you knew about, you know, your family, your friends, authority figures, religious figures, things like that start to fall away. And it's painful. And we see some of that in this episode with Alex and with Carolina. And here with Alex, again, he, he shoots Andre and then freaks out about it because not only, oh my God, did I shoot someone, but you can, you, know that he's thinking, am I becoming like my dad here? Right. And the whole reason why Jeffrey owes Darius is also applicable to what's going on with Pride. Because you have Jonah that's showing up in the prison trying to buy a shopping mall from Jeffrey for, I believe, $3 million. 
Yeah, in a flashback, we should clarify. He's not just suddenly in prison. He's This is a flashback. Yes, it's flashback for, what was it, 15, 20 years yeah. ago, something like that? It's something like that. It's before... Before any of these kids were born. Yeah, before any of these kids were born, before uh, Jeffrey and Catherine were even married. She was still acting as his lawyer. He was in jail. He had a terrible wig on. They both did, uh, Jeffrey and Darius. And in order to get this deal that's going to be life-changing for Jeffrey's gang, he needs Darius to take the fall for killing this guy that Jeffrey's in prison for. And then Darius was just in there for accessory. And then Jeff Jeffrey asked Darius to take the fall for him, to say that he actually shot whoever he shot. I forget the name. I don't think it's important, really. Maybe it is. I don't know. Any, anyway, Darius did, and Jeffrey gets out. So Jeffrey then has his long life for the next 20 years, able to build up what he's got. And Darius is understandably upset because he was not supported the way Jeffrey said he was going to support him or his family. You know, when your friend is like, hey, can I borrow, can, can you buy me lunch? And you're like, yeah, sure. And then, you know, they don't pay you back, but I mean, whatever, it's your friend and it's lunch. That's one thing. You know, when your friend is like, hey, can you take credit for this murder that I committed so I can go on and marry this rich lawyer and become a multimillionaire and, you know, have this amazing life. And sure, I'll hand you scraps from this, but I'm not going to honor our deal in any other meaningful way whatsoever. And I will forget basically every bond that we had and the woman that raised me, I'm going to just kind of forget about her and she's going to be struggling to get by and, you know, with her medication that she needs to live. And yeah, it's not really applicable, is it? It's not, it, it's not like asking somebody to loan you money for lunch. It's, this is a completely different thing. And it's really awful that Jeffrey didn't continue to honor that deal. Again, we are seeing shades of who these parents, who these people are. Not only does this whole thing happen, but then Jeffrey is taking the gunshot Andre and he's taking Andre to be the sacrifice to supercharge Jonah again. And Alex knows something's up because, oh, my dad's going to do this uh, because something went wrong last night. Alex is not dumb and they do it anyway. And unfortunately, they don't do it in the Wilder's home. They do it probably over in the church. That's what I'm guessing. And yeah. And so the kids can't be there to help Andre. They try. They try so hard. And yeah, the what was I saying last time about the whole concept of the less dead and this kid being what Alex could have been? And I think Jeffrey knows a little bit this could have been Alex. But at the same time, he's drifted far enough from whatever you know moral center he used to have that would have allowed him to empathize enough with that to be able to not do this. It's very self-centered, whatever is going on, whatever he's getting out of this deal, so that he's going to continue to take this, you know, minority, this poor minority kid who presumably won't be missed, quote unquote, finger quotes here, and sacrifice him. And he's just going to be another in a long line of missing people whose death won't be properly investigated because eh, they probably just ran away. Plus, they're paying off the detective, too. There's that. And then Leslie, for her part, so she can go ahead and do all this without Frank around, she decides to do the whole faint thing with Frank and send him off into the desert to try to be ultra. And then, nope! You're not there yet. Oh, poor That's Frank. such a dick move. I like that she did it. It's like, all right, we're going to throw him this bone to get him out of our hair for a while, and we're still not going to give him the one thing he wants. <laughs> our readings aren't there. What, what readings are they talking about? I don't understand. Uh, it's, it's just Thetan readings. Don't sue me, Scientology. <laughs> Fair enough. Come at me, Scientology. I got nothing you want. 
You you want my my skull stress ball? You want my collection of Funkos? <laughs> Probably worth something. Sure. I've got a couple that might be worth something. But, Not like actual money, but, but more yeah, than they, I paid for them. They have them out in the desert in like a sweat lodge. And these two women in robes are like, yeah, you're not there yet. Sorry. Well, those are the two women that kidnapped Destiny. Yes, at the beginning. Yeah. yeah. So, like, they were clearly, they're, they're the higher ups that do the dirty work for Leslie. So they were clearly told, like, he's not making Ultra. <sighs> Just why you got him do him dirty like that. <laughs> right. <laughs> God, I feel... I feel kind of bad for Frank. He's just, he's, he's hapless right now. He, he's such a putz. Yeah, he really is. So we find out that Victor has cancer. I don't think that was in the previous episode. I think that was in this episode. He divulged, it was this episode. Yeah, he divulges to Chase that he has cancer. And he's trying to make his invention work. And he's asking Chase to help him. Because the, the vision of the youth seems to be something that he's wanting to do. Yeah, so that could explain the hallucinations he's been having. And yeah, we dis we've discussed in previous uh, episodes, we've done uh, Victor's hallucinations. But he's working on a time machine. and it's, it's not to transport you somewhere, but it's to view stuff in the future. And it looks like it's from the 1950s. But, and it's got microphones. Been working on, on it for a while. Yeah, it's got microphones on top of it and stuff. I mean... We could go into how hokey it is, but okay, science, it's working. And, but it doesn't work. And so they leave the room and then it starts to work. And we see LA imploding. So I think we have a little to worry about here. I dig the fact that it's so retro looking and kind of campy because let's face it, his name is Victor Stein. You got to have some nod to mad science in there somewhere. Yeah, that's okay. I was going to say, anytime a show like this lets you see the future, they're going to give you a way to avert that future. The only show I can think of where they showed you a crappy future and there was no averting it was Dollhouse. Now that you mention it, yeah. And there's the 1980s War of the Worlds, but I don't think they showed you the future got worse and worse and worse <laughs> oh yeah so uh weird gross weird gross jonah we mentioned from how we tried to figure out okay what is this old guy in the 2001 room i remember thinking at first that it was her father yeah we discussed that it was so gross <laughs> we're like oh wow this is really incesty but thankfully it's not her dad yeah we talked about that last episode and michelle spoiled it and that's why we know it's jonah <laughs> yeah, and instead, he is Dr. Doom from the uh, early 2000s, you know, Chris Evans as Human Torch. Cole from movies. the original Charmed. Yeah, uh, the Dr. What's-his-name from Nip Tuck. Yeah, the slightly douchier of the two doctors. Yeah, the slightly douchey of the two, douchier of the two douchey doctors. He has this evil smile. You know, he's smiling, but you're like, oh my God, what are you hiding? I mean, it's like, it's uncomfortable. Stop smiling. <laughs> I always feel like every time I see him, it's like somebody drew that face. Like, that's not really a human face. I'm sure he's a really nice guy, but <laughs> somebody put him together in such a way that he's good at being smarmy d -bet. Somebody was like, hmm, how do I put together a smarmy D-bag? Put that there, put that there, put that there, adjust the smile a little bit. Awesome. How is it that Frank doesn't know about Jonah? Or maybe he does and he just doesn't suspect Because he's anything? not allowed in that room. He's not ultra. Well, I think Frank gets out because they're talking about oh. the... And they mention, he's like, I want to see her. I want to see our daughter. Oh my gosh. Leslie's face when that happened was like... She's Ugh. just like, this is fine it's not fine no <laughs> so the only other thing that i wanted to talk about for this episode was nico when she came back home she snuck back in and she was trying to put the magic wand away and her mom catches her and then says 
okay, I trust you. I hope you trust me sometime in the future. That, that was a bit weird, that whole thing. And I don't think there's any trust going on either way. Well, we've given, we've been given the most reason to distrust Tina, I think, out of all of the parents. Yeah, considering they hint that she might have started the fire that killed the Hazes. Yeah, she seems like the most overtly evil out of all of them. Which means she's probably not, and it's probably, God, for all we know, it's uh, the Yorkses that are the most evil, <laughs> because they seem to be just the most unassuming, happy ones. But she seems, considering that every time we see her, she's kind of deeply unpleasant, and she's in a bad place, and then in the flashback... At this point, we're being led to believe that she sacrificed her daughter. Yeah. So... It's it's interesting. I want to see how our perceptions compare to the truth as the series go, go on. Yeah, if she's not the one that's having an affair either. It's her husband. Yeah. All right. Anything else for this episode, Lauren? I was so glad to see Chase come in with the Fistagons. That's such a terrible name. It's such a terrible name, and they give him so much crap for him into the comics, but that it, I mean, it stuck. Because let's face it, terrible names stick. Yep. Hey, Haley, are you all out for this episode? Yep. All right. Next week, we will be talking about Runaway Season 1, Episode 6, Metamorphosis. It can be found on Hulu, or if you're like me, buy the season, and it's wherever you bought the season. Voodoo, Amazon Prime, whatever. And yeah. So that's what we're going to be doing next week. All right, news time. First up, the Russo brothers put fake scenes in the in game trailers. All right. So the latest Avengers Endgame trailer was out, what, a couple weeks ago? A couple days ago? I don't remember. I've slept. But Joe and Anthony Russo discussed how they used footage that doesn't make it into the final cut of the films in their trailers to preserve the surprise of the narrative. Joe Russo said that the thing that's most important to us is that we preserve the surprise of the narrative. When I was a kid and saw The Empire Strikes Back at 11 a.m. on the day it opened, it so profoundly moved me because I didn't know a damn thing about the story I was going to watch. We're trying to replicate that experience. So what they do is because they film so much, they have a lot of different shots that aren't in the movie that didn't make the final cut that they can manipulate through CG and tell a story they want to tell specifically for the purpose of the trailer and not for the film. So there was discussion about this in the past, like the Super Bowl spot appears to have edited out a character in a scene. And in the latest trailer, many fans are questioning that the shot there's a shot where they're all in their new suits and they're alongside Tony Stark, who, as far as we know, is not on Earth at the time. So it's it's a good way to keep people guessing. And I approve of that, considering that I have seen so many movie trailers where it's just, well, now I don't have to bother seeing the movie. Well, OK, let, let me ask you this, though. Do you are you OK with being faked out in the trailer or do you think that's dishonest? Um, as long as it preserves the feel of the movie, I'm fine. Well, they did this also in Infinity War. Um, there was the big battle scene in Wakanda, and it showed the Hulk there, and he mm -hmm. was not there. Yep. And there were a couple other scenes in the trailer where characters were edited out as well. Yep. All I... What I want is... Again, I want to know the feel of the movie. I miss the old timey. I miss old timey trailers. I miss. Like the not really in a world, the, the Don LaFontaine in a world trailers. But just the ones that kind of give you a feel for what the movie's about instead of just. Here's a bunch of scenes and it we're leading you and here's. Where you can kind of put together, if you analyze the trailer enough, you can put together what's going to happen to the movie. Or, God, I forget what movie it was, but I was sitting down to watch a movie, 
the trailer happened, I was like, well, I don't need to see the movie now. I have seen everything that happens in the trailer. Or there was one that came out last year that gave away the twist in the trailer. Oh, I remember there was that a dog's purpose, whatever it was, the, the one where the dog got lost and came home. You mean a journey home? And yeah, whatever it was. Or an incredible journey or whatever. No, it, not, it wasn't Homeward Bound. It was one that came out last year the, where the dog makes friends with the mountain lion right. or whatever. It's been done before. That's it, my only point. It's been point. done so many times. But the thing is, compare the trailer for that movie with the trailer for Homeward Bound that came out, what was like almost 30 years ago. And it's just a completely different feel. And then compare all of the trailers that are out now. Compare the trailer for a horror movie out now with the trailers for horror movies from the 80s or the 60s. It's, again, a completely different feel. That's why I feel things that, like us, are a master. Okay, that's, again, rant over. Let's go. You just <laughs> totally depressed me because Homeward Bound was done 25 years ago. I was like, there's no way that was 30 years ago. It was done in 1993. That's 25 years ago. Oh, my god. That sounds about right. <laughs> And then the original one, The Incredible Journey, was done in 1963. So that is yep. another 30 years down the road. Ugh. I loved that book so much as a kid. And I was, again, that weird book purist who was like, they changed the species of the dog. <laughs> they changed their names. <laughs> yeah, and they didn't talk in the book either, eight-year-old me. STFU. You just said that to an eight-year-old. Yeah, but it's me, so it's fine. Then I went into a, a meet and they, the animals, quote unquote, came to a mall in a city near me and I begged my mom to take me so I could meet them. See, this is why Lauren's so screwed up because future Lauren <laughs> came back to past Lauren when she was eight and just totally... I would slap the crap out of eight-year-old me. I really would. So we can't anyway. give you a time machine. Yeah, this is why I can't have a time machine. First of all, I would just completely screw with the Puritans. And second of all, I would go up and beat up eight-year-old me. Anyway. All right. Well, just for the record, I'm against fake scenes in trailers, but, you know, you've given your arguments and okay. I'm actually kind of against the concept of trailers to begin with. I think they spoil the movie, but whatever. Speaking of upcoming movies, uh, Black Widow movies happening and... It's rumored that the villain will be Taskmaster. So we've discussed previously, okay, they're looking for this particular type of actor to be this particular type of villain. Well, this particular type of villain is rumored to be Taskmaster, like Haley just said, who in the comics can mimic any power he can observe, which is referred to as photographic reflexes. Amusingly enough, except for Deadpool, who is too unpredictable. And currently, the rumored frontrunner is Andre Holland, who can be seen in the movie Moonlight and the TV show The Nick. And he's a really, really good actor, so check him out in both of those. And I really like Taskmaster as a villain in the comics. He's not always the villain. Sometimes he's a good guy. He was actually an instructor in Avengers Initiative, the comic. So, good job. And another rumor, Haley, about Black Widow? Yeah, more Black Widow rumors. Florence Pugh is going to be joining the movie. So we discussed a couple weeks ago, oh, hey, Emma Watson might be joining in this kind of kick-ass secret agent role. That seems to have fallen through, and currently the rumored frontrunner for that part is Florence Pugh, who you can see currently in Fighting in My Family, and you can also see her in the Robert the Bruce movie with Chris Pine on Netflix. And she's amazing in that. So I'm in favor of her. I really like her. Marvel, however, has no con... No, I was about to say no conflict. No comment on the news. And in the article, they also kind of make it known that it's unclear whether Black Widow will be an origin tale or set after Avengers Endgame. So, shrug. <laughs> but it looks fun i mean we've been wanting this for a while i've been yep. wanting this for a while anyway so yes hey and then we have a few more casting rumors um shang chi is an upcoming marvel film and it's rumored that they might have found a lead for it okay 
We've talked about Shang-Chi a little bit before, and it's going to be the studio's first movie tentpole franchise with an Asian hero. Chinese-American writer Dave Callahan, we've mentioned previously, has been tapped to pen the strip. The, the script. And so far, the, uh, a source close to a website called We Got This Covered, so take this with a grain of salt, has said that Marvel has their eye on former Walking Dead star Steve Yun, who you might know as playing Glenn on The Walking Dead and who's been in a whole bunch of movies lately and is generally really awesome, might be playing Shang-Chi. But there's another rumor that said that Mike Mo could be kind of in the running. Now, where do I know him from? You might say, well, a trailer for Quentin Tarantino's Once Upon a Time in Hollywood just dropped. Mike Moe is in that as Bruce Lee. And uh, where have we seen him before? Oh, yeah. He was Triton in Inhumans, a.k.a. <laughs> was only in it for like two scenes and died. But And was covered in pretty was, thick prosthetics. Yeah. But is actually a good actor despite that. And is actually a really good martial artist. So would not be a bad choice and should be, I think, given a chance to redeem himself, if not in this project and many others. I'm impressed that you guys remember anything from Inhumans because I brain bleached that entire series. I wish I could. There was some really good casting. The writing and directing was less than stellar. Yeah. But the casting was honestly pretty... Again, these actors... The actors that were in it weren't shrugs. They were good actors who were given less than great material that they couldn't. You can only elevate stuff so far. Let's, make, let's put it this way. The series was so bad that the network almost didn't cancel it. Just let it die by not canceling it. They almost forgot that they hadn't canceled it yet. <laughs> We talked about it before. Yeah. 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 They just kind of ghosted it. Ryan Reynolds' Deadpool is the only character not being rebooted by the Fox-Disney merger. So we've been discussing this for a long time, and the Fox-Disney merger finally happened. Now, whether this is a good thing or a bad thing, up to a lot of discussion, I will say there are a lot of jobs being lost from this, which is not great on both camps not just yes, with the not fox just with fox it's a lot of jobs on both sides i do not like that but just on a positive note just something to make you smile on tuesday morning so that would be uh march 12th wait march 19th Ryan Reynolds tweeted a photo of Deadpool on a school bus sporting Mickey Mouse ears and said, feels like the first day of pool. So while Kevin Feige is supposedly meeting with several members of the X-Men Old Guard writers in recent months, and Disney is supposedly deciding on the fate of New Mutants after seeing it, and Noah Hawley who was supposed to write a Doctor Doom movie, confirmed that he's spoken to Kevin Feige. So we don't know if that's going to happen or not. All of these Fox projects, all of these X-Men projects are all up in the air. But Deadpool is still just a really huge success. And... It seems like they're just going to leave that alone. Don't mess with success. Everybody loves it. Shrug. I mean, keep on doing what you're doing. Just kind of leave that alone. Pat, pat, pat. I guess the only problem with that would be that one quick scene where he opens the door in the X-Men mansion and you see characters from the rest of the X-Men universe. I think that's the only link. Deadpool... His whole thing is the fourth wall. This is not going to be a problem. He's just going to make some comments. Hey, I thought you were the other. <laughs> McAvoy or Stewart? Remember? Yeah, I remember. So this is not going to be a problem. I look forward to seeing what's in the future. I've said for a while that 
the Dark Phoenix was going to be the last movie in this series. And if you want to end it somewhere, I think Logan's a good place to end it. But if you want to see what happens, you can go out and see what happens this June. Thank you very much to everybody who has talked with us in the various social media, including some emails. So we do have some things to talk about this week. Lauren, what happened on Twitter? All right. Uh, we have gotten a whole bunch of feedback, but I have done a little bit of picking and choosing. And from at Adana Girl, helping my mom clean out cabinets. She had a box of baking soda that expired in 2005. Do you think the free Blockbuster DVD or VHS rental offer on the box is still good? Hashtag Captain Marvel. <laughs> mm, yeah. There's at least, there's one Blockbuster still around. So, I mean, try taking it up there. <laughs> I don't, uh, wow, if they do have VHS to rent, I don't think they do, but okay. Or DVD. The final Blockbuster store, by the way, is in Bend, Oregon. So you can try taking that coupon to Bend, Oregon and see what happens. And you know where the year, they are so far behind the times <laughs> that they still have a Blockbuster. There was one in Alaska that had, thanks to John Oliver, Russell Crowe's jockstrap. Yeah, I was going to say crotch guard, but no, jockstrap from uh, Cinderella Man. Oh, I thought it was from Gladiator. Was it from Gladiator? I thought it was from Cinderella Man. I think it was Man. from Gladiator. It was the big leather one. Yeah. That's from Cinderella Man, and he, they also had some other stuff that he bought from Gladiator. But anyway, that one went under last year, so now there's only one blockbuster left. We also had some news over on our Discord to talk about. Yeah, so speaking also of Captain Marvel, Johnny Bacon said, I'm torn. Oh, oh, on the subject of us almost having our Captain Marvel episode out. Knowing how strongly I disliked the movie and that I'm sure you are all celebrating it as the best thing out of Marvel, I'm concerned of the effects of tuning in. Will you convince me it isn't as bad as I thought or will your swooning over what I consider horrible directing just annoy me more? Well, I mean... I guess there's just one way to find out, and that's by listening. All movies are not for everyone. I happen to love it. I don't think it was a perfect movie, but I think it was a fun movie. And that's really all I ask for. And I was going to see it again this weekend, but then I had only gotten four hours of sleep last night. and was like, I, no, I need sleep too much to go see this movie at 10 o'clock at night. I climbed a mountain yesterday. I didn't have time to watch movies. I mean, fair. My legs hurt. Also fair. My leg hurts, but that's because uh, I slipped in the shower. So I wow. cannot recommend that experience. Same. Do we need to get you a shower chair? I have considered I this. wanted one so bad yesterday after the hike. Yeah, I, I have seriously considered this. But yes, if, again, all movies are not for everyone, there is no shame in not liking a movie, your opinion is your opinion. Much as I'm like, no, this is, you know, objectively the wrong opinion. No, I'm, again, I am joking when I say that. Opinions are opinions. If you like a movie, if you don't like a movie, it's a movie. But if we say we like a movie and you don't like it, there's no need to go point by point with us through everything that is wrong with the movie. Also. Yeah. Some people have felt that need if I said I liked Captain Marvel. Yeah, it's, again, it, it's. It's kind of the same thing with sex. Don't yuck someone's yum, generally speaking. <laughs> that said, it is perfectly fine for somebody to send in feedback to talk about. Yeah, it's, it's fine to be like, hey, this is it, like, I would like to know what you didn't like about it just because. Just honestly, I want to know what didn't work for you, but it's again, much like in therapy and stuff, me centered language is always preferred over you centered language just as a general life tip and as an example we actually have an email from a listener that hasn't listened to our episode yet but had some things to say about captain marvel it was from 084 
084. I was going to say OH4, but it's 084. <laughs> and 084 had these to say. Hey guys, I'm still working my way through your backlogs. Just wanted to share some speculation I have. Great podcast, by the way. Just had a thought while rewatching Age of Ultron prepping for Endgame. There have been rumors that Captain Marvel's sequel may not be taking place in present day. At first, I wasn't sure about it. It's a little close to what Wonder Woman's doing. Then things started making sense. Ronan obviously has much more story to tell. He didn't leave the movie on a clear path to where he was in the first Guardians movie, so he could definitely return if the sequel takes place before 2014. But there's also the Supreme Intelligence. This movie was the first time we ever heard the Al Kree leader mentioned at all. None of the Kree on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. referred to it, and it doesn't come up at all between Nova Prime and the Kree she was Skyping with. So, where did it all go? Well, what if the Captain Marvel sequels deal with another Infinity Stone? It could be that in order to save itself from Carol, it transferred itself into the Mind Stone, which the Kree potentially could have used to alter or erase Carol's memories when they took her. Because that still isn't explained. Or perhaps the Supreme Intelligence is the Mind Stone, which could explain how an AI is powerful enough to run its own planet. Maybe in a post credit scene, a defeated Ronin shows up to Titan with the stone for Thanos, who we know lends it out to Loki later on. There are some small things that work against this theory. Phases 1 through 3 have been titled the Infinity Saga, so it might seem a little out of place to stick a stone into a Phase 4 movie if we're going to leave Endgame not worrying about them. But it would be a nice explanation for Age of Ultron and why the consciousness in the Mind Stone was so powerful and so skewed towards evil. It could also explain why Vision apparently didn't get any of Ultron's malice if the creation of Ultron separated the Supreme Intelligence from the Stone. Just some thoughts. Until next time, 084. I've actually been discussing that this weekend with uh, a friend. And I honestly agree. I think that Captain Marvel 2 is not going to take place in present day. I think it's going to take place, like 084 said, in the in-between time between Guardians and Captain Marvel. Because, yeah, Ronin, there's kind of a hanging thread there left with Ronin and the Supreme Intelligence. And if you look up stuff about the Supreme Intelligence in the comics... There's a lot of stuff there with Ronin and the Supreme Intelligence. So, yeah, let us see. Let us see Carol kind of forcing the Kree into all these peace treaties. Let us see Carol versus the Supreme Intelligence. That would be really cool. And I don't know. We know that moving forward, Carol's going to be effectively taking the place of the center of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I don't know. Just I give us more. I want more. <laughs> yes. Definitely interesting speculation here. So we talked a little bit about it last time when we did our Captain Marvel podcast about what happens with Ronan and everything. So there was a little bit of a back and forth over the fact that Yang Rong might be coming back might not I think he should because I don't think dropping him I, it, has it been done before in Marvel yes but I don't think dropping Jude Law just like that of jetting off from planet Earth and I, I don't think that's going to happen I think they're going to use him again so my small take on it so I look forward to seeing what happens with Captain Marvel 2 and with Endgame no idea what happens we've said this before so we've got a month until it happens, and then we'll find out what the post credit scenes are like, right? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Well, in that light, we're going to go ahead and use our crystal ball, and we're going to see the future, and we're going to walk right on out. been a fun few weeks talking about Runaways and Endgame and Captain Marvel and I'm looking forward to the next couple of months because we got Shazam, the DC Captain Marvel, we've got Endgame, we've got Days of Future Past or I mean 
uh, Dark Phoenix coming out. <laughs> so we have a lot of stuff coming. And thank you for bearing with us as we get through all this stuff. And oh, by the way, we have this little premiere of season six coming up of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I don't believe it's going to happen. It's been 85 years. Uh, thank you to everybody who gets a hold of us. We love hearing your opinions. Again, even if you don't agree with us, just don't attack us. That's all we ask. Just don't tell us why we're wrong. We won't tell you why you're wrong. We just want to hear opinions. And again, thank you so much. We, we love you guys and enjoy enjoying things and have fun. Yeah. Thank you to everybody that's listening. Thank you to everybody that chooses to go back and listen to all of our old babble that we put out on the internets. Um, and thank you for sending any feedback that you send. We appreciate all of it. We appreciate you. And until next time, I'm Director SP. I'm Agent Haley. And I'm Agent Lauren. See you guys next week. Bye. 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 Thank you for listening. If you want to leave us feedback, go to gunageek.com and you will find all our contact information and other shows. You can also visit legendsofshield.com where you'll find our complete archive of podcasts. The music heard on this podcast is by Kevin McLeod, found at incompetech.com and also artists on pond5.com and audiojungle.net. The opinions heard on this podcast are those of the individual hosts and do not represent Stargate Pioneer Productions, Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D., or Gunna Geek. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is the property of the Disney Corporation, Marvel Studios, and ABC. No infringement is intended. Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D. is copyright 2013 through 2019.